Prime Minister John Key is with us in the Auckland studio. Thanks so much for coming in. Let's start Pleasure. there. There's a lot to talk about, but let's start with um, what you heard Neil Curtis saying there. Do you think that that is the sentiment behind this thing? It's an anti-immigration <coughs> populism that's crept in? Oh, I think that's absolutely right. There's two elements of this debate that have seen them vote to leave. One is the uncontrolled migration and the, fe- the, the, the feeling that they can't control it. I think more than just that they can't control it. Because about half of the... 670,000 odd people who pour in every year into Britain have come from the EU, so there's no controls on that. And then the second part of it, I still think, has been the feeling that they're shoveling money into Europe and they take the regulations from Europe and they don't like that, so it's about equal. Okay, let's focus as much as we can on the impact on New Zealand, given that's your your responsibility. Do you worry that some sort of anti-immigration sort of sentiment can spill here? We have had sort of little slivers of it creep into our national debate. When you look overseas and you look at this tension right throughout the world, you see it in America too with the rise of Donald Trump, do you worry that this sort of sentiment could take hold in New Zealand as well? Well, I don't think it's new that you have politicians challenging um, immigration. I mean, Winston Peters has been on that campaign for as long as he's been in New Zealand first. So I don't think it's new, and I think you'll see him beat the drum because you'll see him want to try and turn this to his advantage. The main thing I would say, though, is that uh, we can and we do control migration. It's a very different situation. The only place where we don't have control over migration is Australians coming to New Mm. Zealand, and that's not an issue. There are many people in New Zealand who believe we take into too many immigrants, though, are you going to change stance at all? No, but we always, as I said, can and do control migration. So it's important to understand that the categories of people that come in, okay, forget returning Kiwis and Australians and that sort of thing. They're people either on a working holiday programme, in which case they're temporary, or people on a work visa, in which case we need them. Right. And they, they are temporary migrants. That's the interesting thing. We can convert them to residents, If we choose to, and we think it's in New Zealand's interest to do so, quite different in the UK. In the UK, these people are turning up, and, you know, actually there's been strong arguments, it's been great for the UK, Mm. uh, young workforce working hard, but... But um, it's a different situation to Okay, hear. let's have a look. You would have had substantial briefings on this as Prime Minister. What are your major concerns about the Brexit in terms of the impact on New Zealand? In the very short term, it'll just be volatility in the international markets and how they read what that um, really means. It's one thing to have $2 trillion wiped off the stock market on a sort of single day. It's another issue to say, well, OK, do the markets recover, take a breath, Except this is a you know now what's happened even if it's caught them by surprise and then put a bit of context around it or does it lead to something a little more serious because in terms of New Zealand's position of access for people and goods I'm quite confident that position is okay because of the assurance. Let's move to that had. in a second. Interest rates does it make it more likely that the Reserve Bank of New Zealand will cut interest rates? I don't think so in the short term primarily because what he's looking at is the strength of the New Zealand economy and if you look at his last monetary policy statement, he effectively had growth in New Zealand at a slightly stronger rate than the Treasury, so he's north of 3%. I think he will obviously look at the world markets. One one could argue he's got room to move if he needed to. Um, that That's probably a buffer that's useful from um, Graham Wheeler's perspective, but I, I don't think of itself it'll make him cut. The New Zealand um, delegations are trying to forge an EU trade agreement. We're about halfway through that. Britain was our biggest mate in that yeah. area, really. Uh, they're gone. That'll make it harder, won't it? Well, what it does... It'll make that it harder for New Zealand to, to negotiate this EU free trade agreement. Well, they were a great voice to have around the table because the process we're going through now is that um, the European Commission is going reaching out to all of the historically 28 member states and, and obviously getting feedback. And then you get to the next point of the negotiation. And so Britain was a useful voice there. The one thing I will say is that it supports the view that we've quietly been taking of building relationships outside of just Britain. So you know, I've, I've met Angela Merkel on numerous occasions. I've, I've met Francois Hollande on a number of occasions. Yeah, so you've I been think doing that's that been useful. Work. What Would we try and forge a free trade agreement with the United Kingdom? We will have to, because at the moment... We will have to do that. Well, I think we will have to, because at the moment we've got access both for people and for goods into the UK under existing rules that have been negotiated. And what we've got is an agreement from both the British and EU officials that those rules will remain until new rules are negotiated. Right, but so fundamentally, we, we need new rules. So we need got, an FTA. Yeah, so, right, so we've got two years, effectively, roughly, to, to, to sort yeah. out... 
but you know, you look at the UK. Will it be the UK? Will it be the United Kingdom? You look at Scotland and Ireland. Well, that's the issue, isn't it? Um, you know, you, you can already see the the comments that Nicola Sturgeon's making in Scotland. Um, if Scotland was to go. What does that all mean? Do you think we risk a breakup of the United Kingdom, the three hundred year old multinational state? Yeah, it's so raw at the moment. I wouldn't want to either predict or, or really overly comment on it. But yeah, you can just see the discussion that's happening at the moment. There'll be a really strong feeling amongst some places, certainly Scotland, wanted to stay, and you can see um, the comments that that, that um, you know the first minister is, is making in Scotland that. She's now getting advice on yeah. where, are they better so, off basically part of the UK or better off as part so of Europe. So do you keep the uh, Union Jack on the flag? Well, I don't <laughs> want to say that, but, you know, yeah, I mean, look, in the end, we're not only are we wrapping someone, ourselves you, in someone else's flag, it could be the flag they don't What fly. is it with leaders and referendums? Yeah, I know. Losing well, there them. you go. Yeah, yeah. Well, it happens, doesn't it? But some are more significant than others. All right. Thank yeah. you so much for coming in and joining Thanks us this go. morning. We do appreciate your time.